Gabby Beckford, your favorite curly haired lifestyle and travel influencer at Pax Light. Today I want to talk about something kind of serious money. Specifically, if I should go on a press trip to a beautiful destination unpaid. Here's the situation. I was invited to a beautiful destination, all expenses paid, flights, accommodations, food, activities, all of it, but not paid additionally. Before you freak out, I know that for the average person, like me, three years ago, that offer alone is the dream. And that most people, again, like me, just three years ago, would be jumping for joy, like clapping, begging, screaming at the sky, so happy to get this offer. But I, as a full-time career travel influencer, have a lot of pause about not being paid additionally, which is what I want to dig into today. Let's tap in. I was invited on an all-expenses-paid trip to Disclaimer, I know what a first world problem this is. I know there are people dying out there. Please, trust and believe. Um, so why am I talking about this? This is how I make a living. I do want my followers to understand this topic. I want brands to understand this topic. And more than anything, I do want other creators to be set up for success. That's my disclaimer. That said, I think there's a point where influencers shouldn't work for free. I believe this for the same reason that I believe students shouldn't take completely unpaid internships that don't like have some sort of ROI. There's too much abundance otherwise. And maybe that's actually, that's the whole point of this video wrapped into one that I need to take a hard look at myself is that there's so many opportunities out there. Why would you take the unpaid one? If you have a true abundance mindset, which is something I preach a lot at PAX Light is like, there's always another opportunity. Why would you take the unpaid one when you could you know, take the one that is equally as aligned or more aligned and paid. It'll be more aligned because it's paid. And while I believe that to my core, I'm making this video because it's a lot harder in practice, especially as a travel influencer, which I will dig into first, actually. Travel is a very unique niche. I think more so than like beauty or fashion or the general lifestyle niche because the product of travel is a very high ticket item. Makeup is usually in the hundreds of dollars. Fashion too, I'd say usually in the hundreds of dollars, maybe a thousand dollars, like when it gets luxury. Travel is regularly in the thousands of dollars. Sometimes luxury, tens of thousands of dollars. So in that way, I would equate it more closely to niches like home, like interior design, um, or finance, or tech. Like it's a funky beast. It's an expensive product and service. But what that means for me as a travel and lifestyle influencer is that when 10 of my followers book a flight and book a week's worth of hotel, activity, food, we're moving serious money, like economy shifting money, especially for smaller destinations, which is why I don't usually work for free. There was a creator on TikTok who I just saw actually come up in my feed, um, Yaz, Yasmin Adeline, I think, who had a really great series of points about why she thinks the influencer economy gets so much flack for shelling out these thousands of dollars in general, not in the travel industry, but like in general. She brought up points that like being an influencer is one of the only female dominated industries that pays well, like pay, that pays numbers like this. Think about nursing, think about teaching. They don't pay well historically, even though those are essential jobs. And how important it is that we support this because this level of financial freedom has given women their freedom. And mommy bloggers can work at home and raise their kids. And there's just so much freedom and autonomy that's come with being an influencer. And more importantly to this discussion, that the reason that brands can shell out these tens of thousands of dollars I wonder if you guys just saw this little fly that flew in front. Where are these flies coming from? And more relevant to this discussion, the reason that these brands can shell out thousands, tens of thousands for the big babes, hundreds of thousands of dollars is because they're getting that money in return. Like they're not shelling it out because they have the ethics to support women. Like it's, it's business, like it, it's good business, right? They're paying influencers well because influencers are converting. So like there's a lot of value in what they do in what I do, which is why again, I don't usually work for free. But today what I wanna talk about is actually aside from the bills because I do feel like influencers in general talk about why influencers don't work for free in regards to money. Like very obviously like I need money from my work on this transaction to pay my bills, right? Which is why the title of this video is why influencers can't work for free aside from bills because I feel like that point is the number one that's, that's harped on. There are other more subtle reasons that influencers cannot and should not work for free and that's what I wanna highlight in this video. So aside from me wanting and needing to pay my bills, which is a pretty huge reason that sits at the center of this, like why should I not work for free web, are four additional reasons that I think that influencers should not work for free and that brands should not want influencers to work for free. Like, like that this is a bad business model for everyone involved. Number one, if and when I do accept unpaid work, it is perhaps not my best content, honestly. Not being 
paid takes away from my experience. Inherently, it does. Because I am still being on. I'm still waking up early for the 4 a.m. hot air balloon ride. I'm still taking notes. I'm still interviewing people. Like, I am still not quite on vacation. I'm in work mode for the entire trip and I'm not getting to relax. Like I'm, I'm expending all this energy and I don't get the dopamine hit at the end of it. Once I've done all the strategy and execution and community engagement and stuff of, okay, and here's your reward. Like it messes with the system. It messes with the cycle. And when I don't get paid or when I know I'm not going to get paid, I still might have the experience of a lifetime. Like if I went to I know I would have the experience of a lifetime. It's just that when I know I'm not getting paid, my mind is honestly wandering. I'm like, dang, I have another blog post to finish that is paid. I really wanna wake up early for that sunrise breakfast or do I wanna spend that hour doing something that's actually paid? Like when it's unpaid, it just naturally gets deprioritized, which is not in the benefit of the brand, honestly, or the destination. And it's not in my benefit either, trying to multitask. And it's funny because the inverse of this is that I like trips that are sponsored that have no obligation for posting at all. Like if I get gifted um, an iPad and they're like, here's a gift, no obligation to post, be free, do whatever you want. That's actually when I do my best content because I don't have to worry about like the legal team or all the stuff around it because I'm like, okay, wait, it's gifted, fun. I can do whatever I want. Like that's awesome, that's perfect. But on this trip, I can't even relax, I can't, like do what I want. I can't wake up and see how I feel and decide I wanna go swimming in the morning or I wanna to go to lunch at night. Like the schedule is already pre-made. The itinerary is booked. They had to call these vendors and stuff in advance. So I don't even get the freedom to have like a DIY vacation. Even if it's just a sponsored trip like this where they're not paying me additionally because they're like, okay, we are investing in flying you all the way out here and like giving you this whole experience. We want our ROI, like tag us everywhere. Make 50 daily Instagram stories where you're tagging us everywhere. And like that's them wanting their ROI, but I'm like, What's my ROI? And again, as a travel influencer, I have a different perspective than the average person who takes one trip a year and would be so grateful for a completely funded trip, even if it's like, you know, super maxed out with work. Or then another influencer in a different niche, let's say beauty, who goes on a press trip, a brand trip with a brand like Tarte and doesn't travel that much still. Like they are mostly in their room, like I am right now, making their content on a day-to-day -day basis. And like to them, this is like a dopamine hit. This is so exciting. They're just grateful to be there. They maybe have never left the country before. That is the reward in and of itself. For me, I travel all the time. My schedule is booked out. I moved to New York to slow down my travels. Like I'm not looking just to travel for fun. Well, I am looking to travel for fun, that's such a lie because I became a travel influencer because I wanna travel for fun. I would love to go in general. I would just love to be paid on top of it so that I can feel at peace with going and not feel like I am doing something for fun for free when I could be doing something paid, which is honestly my second point is time. The time that I, or any creator is doing something for free is time, the time, the energy, the, the mental energy, the social energy that is being actively taken away from something that's paid. Okay, so it's the beginning of June right now as I'm making this video. Let's say that this trip ends up being scheduled for the first week in August. If I have nothing to do in August and then a trip that's free, why not? Especially one that I'm excited about. But imagine by the end of June, I get two more offers in as an influencer. I get two more pitches. Hey, can you do this? Come out here, have some fun. It's for the first week of August. Well, now I'm in an awful situation. I'm in an awful spot. And for anyone who's thinking immediately, oh, I would just message the unpaid opportunity and say like, hey, I got a paid offer. I'm no longer able to follow through on my commitment to come to this destination, blah, 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 blah. It's not that easy. I wish it was that easy because that's exactly what I would do, but it's not that easy because these people are human beings. Like as beautiful and as important it is to not have AI run absolutely everything, humans are not as objective as a robot is. Humans have memories, humans have feelings, humans have stress. Imagine that this brand or product or DMO or agency or whatever um, reached out to me because they're like, okay, we pitched you to the brand. They're so excited to work with you, blah, blah, blah. Like they want you, Gabby, they want you. They're so excited. And I said, yes. And then I come back and I'm like, hey, I know I was excited too, but you guys are not paying me. Like I need to go where the money is. This is my business. This is how I make money. This is how I make a living. They might say, completely understandable, that's okay. But in their brain, it's not that way. Because the next opportunity that comes around that's paid, they'll be like, oh, Gabby. She canceled on this last minute and it, it really stressed me out and I had to go scramble and find other influencers and like Gabby put me that in that position and like and that's just human nature It's not saying that like people in marketing are fickle or anything like that It's literally human nature to associate people with memories like that And so 
as an influencer, you have to think about that stuff. It's so ridiculous, but you do have to. Like, dang, why am I in the position of either burning a bridge with an agency, a connector, a middleman, especially as a woman, especially as what? A woman of color, a black woman working as a creator. Do I wanna burn that bridge or do I wanna burn the bridge with my money, my bank, with my income, with my bills I have to pay, with like, right? Why am I in that position? Which gets me to my third point. I hate being in that position. I hate being in that position. I hate being in awkward positions. Why am I here? Who put me here? I know I didn't put me here. I like to plan ahead and I like to be communicative and I like to just be honest and I wish everyone was as direct and as honest as I can be so that we could all just be like, hey, I have to like skip this and do the paid thing and then not take it personally because I wouldn't take it personally, but that's not how the world works. But I hate being stressed. And that's the third reason that creators just shouldn't work for free because it stresses us out. The management can't even tell me what to do because there is an opportunity for a free trip. Um, an unpaid trip to be content for additional opportunities. Like maybe if a product reaches out to me and I said yes to this trip, I could take the product and say like, hey, here's you know my Apple Watch in and like make money that way. That's a very smart way. A lot of travel and travel lifestyle influencers or like people who bridge two niches make money, but it's just not guaranteed, right? Um, and I can do what I can to like pitch myself in this trip and all that stuff. But like, look how much labor that is for me for that to not be guaranteed. I'd rather just be what? paid paid up front and so the stress the stress like we should pay creators just so they can do good work and have a good time and not be stressed and not associate the brand or the agency with bad memories because it goes both ways finally the fourth reason is that i just don't think that creators should work for free is because when they do they set a precedence and i think about that a lot as someone who owns um, and manages a coaching program called your travel influencer bag like that's the brand. How, like what do I say to my students when I post my content? I'm like, hey, this destination was beautiful. I was crying, like it's so beautiful. And they're like, well, tell me about negotiations you did with the brand. Tell me how you got your rate up. Tell me how much you got paid so I can like take the proportion and like know my own rates. What do I say to them when I told them, yeah, I did it for free. And they're like, well, is this, did you spin it some way? And I'm like, no, I just couldn't say no. Like these are all the things I think about and like I just don't think I should be in this position doing my job. Plumbers get paid to do their jobs. Teachers get paid poorly to do their jobs. Again, why? Because we're women. And again, tourism is weird. The tourism industry is weird because these trips are very, very valuable. But the same thing with like a home design influencer. Giving a home influencer a free home every time they do home influencer content would rack up to a lot of money, honestly, yeah, but they don't need a physical home they need money right <laughs> and they can sell that home i don't even have a physical product to take home with me from travel like i have memories which are much more valuable to be fair but like if i got a home for every time i did an unpaid trip i could sell that and have value i can't do that as a travel influencer and that's why again travel is such a weird place travel is such a weird industry because there's no physical product except for like a broken leg or a scraped knee or a suntan or like what like what happens to you but we're selling tens of thousands of dollars and that's really really valuable again especially to smaller destinations and that's why we should what be paid and so i don't know at the end of the day i don't know if i'm gonna go to for all the reasons i just said i think i shouldn't but for all the reasons i just said i really want to I've never been there i would be so excited and still what blessed and privileged and like again i know this is a first world problem but it's a problem that travel influencers have to talk about and like have to face and so i'm just sharing some transparency around my thought process so that maybe the brands or the agencies that may find this and watch this and send this to each other can have I don't know about sympathy, but like a little business sympathy, a little say like, hey, yeah, that does diminish the quality of the content. Yeah, maybe that's why they're not hitting the KPIs. Yeah, like it's not good business practice to have creators, especially seasoned creators, career creators uh, be unpaid because look at all the effects. Like rewatch the video, that's the effect. And even micro creators, it doesn't really matter how big your following is, it's like, how great your storytelling is and there's a lot of factors to measure so i don't want it to seem like oh when you're small you don't have to get paid when i was smaller i was paid less often but i still try to get my bag and that's what we do in ytib just in case you're watching this and you're a travel creator and you're like wait what was that your travel influencer bag is my course in community that you should join it's linked in the caption get into your travel influencer bag join the ytib babes but yeah i hope this is helpful at least the thought process of why I would not want to be unpaid 
and why I may not go, or why I, why I may go. By the time you're watching this, maybe I've already went, and I'm like, you guys, it was amazing. Even if I do do that, just know that underneath that, right, right behind that, there's a part of me that's like, dang, I probably just miss out on like 20K of opportunities just because I wanted to do this for free, and like, no matter what, I'm gonna be kicking myself over that, and that's not what any brand or DMO should want. So, see you. Now, some of these girls who are not travel specific, they be going on these press trips, not very disclosed is all I'll say. I'm like, how is that legal? How are y'all doing that? And I can't do that trip with like Tarte. And this is, they don't travel that much. <laughs> Why? Why? Okay.